Let's talk about the door context, yeah? So right I've now? been trying to get her to really look at me mm -hmm. before I let her out the door. Okay. So that she, so that I'm telling her it's okay. All right, what's her off switch? Free. Okay, so we're talking about um, getting the dog to look at you and wait to be released out the door. So the idea is you can get a lot of training time in these doors. I highly suggest you don't just do it when you're going out the door. You can have short five minute training sessions to where you never go out the door. You make going out the door not an event. Well, that's coming out of your pay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that is a very, very high quality. You got to return 10 of those before I found them out. So, what we want to do is, there's only two things we're going to say here. The indicator and the off switch. That's it. Okay. Forget the cue for eye contact. Let's get this to be contextual default behavior at every door you look at me. Okay? You don't need the cue at the doors. The door's the cue. Right. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah, it's a contextual cue. That means you're just getting at the door. And then we'll talk about the signal cue, which is I need it no matter where we are. Okay? Right. So, the door, which is fun. So a couple things you can do. If she's not interested in getting out the door right now, this is like chill. You can put her dinner dish out there. You can put a toy out there. You can put one of the kids out there. You can put one of you out there. So now she wants to get out the door. So now you're creating that excitement. So now she doesn't even want to go out. So let's let's use this. Do you have something she loves that if she sees me put it out there, she's going to want to go out the door? Yes. Yes. Free. Free. Hello. Come up and help me. Now this is what you do in real life. Just go back in and do it again. You see, this is just the door. Is putting something out there she wants. So I can do real life. Rehearsal. All right. So wait for her to look at you. Just wait silently. Wait. Yes. Yes. Yes? Free. So, my indicator was Free. she sat down and looked at me. I don't really care if she sits down. I'm not asking for her butt to be on the ground. I'm asking for eyes. Right. Okay? okay. She sits down and then she looks at me. That's fine. But what so, if she doesn't sit down? What if she just looks at you? Well, usually what she they just did, because it's easier to sit and look yeah. up at you than right. stand and look at you. Right. And that's what she's rehearsed, perhaps. Yes. Okay. So, you come to the door if she wants out. You just wait for her to look at you. Right. You don't need to say anything. She okay. wants to go out the door. <laughs> You're let her figure out how in the heck am I going to get out that door. So just say nothing until just she looks wait. at you. Just wait. She's going to stare at the until door, at stare at the door, and then and then she did this. <sighs> Why yes? Yeah. And then I open the door. It's a secondary reinforcer. I didn't say three. I'm letting the dog know that's the correct answer. You wait for your off switch, and then I begin to open the door. Then she looks away. I close the door. She looks at me again. I indicate why yes. Open the door. Wait for her to give you the answer. She looks at you again. Is this what I want? Why yes. Wait a little longer. She's still looking at you, and free. Okay. So you're using opening the door as letting her know yes predicts that that's the right answer I'm opening the door which is not a release so this is like giving the dog food or a toy it's a secondary reinforcer uh -huh.
It is reinforcement because she's predicting that what she wants is to get out the door. Yeah. You're saying if you want to get out the door, you need to wait, mm -hmm. focus on me, and I will let you know when you can go out. And the free is the letting her know she can go so out. off switch. This is the okay. door method of eye contact. Smile and wait. When she looks at you, indicate. Yes. Shut the door and wait for her to look at you again. Indicate, yes. open the door and wait. Yes. Open the door a little more, wait. And when she commits to look at you again, turn her off and let her out. Yes, breathe. Smile and wait. Stand up straight. Let her look for you. Yes. Don't you look for her. Good. Open your door. Wait. Shut the door. Wait for her to give you the answer. Yes. Open the door. Wait for commitment. Yes. Open it more. Now this time when she commits, you're going to turn her off and let her out. Stand up straight and smile. Let her look up at you. There you go. It's okay if she lays down. That's fine with me. Wait for eyes. She's focused on the dish now. Wait mm -hmm. for her to look at you. Ah, smile. Wait. Stand up straight. Start to step out a little. Don't fall. Don't take your eyes off her. Start to come back in. Just shut your door. There it is. Now turn her off and let her out. Free. The reason why I'm telling you to stand up is because what I'm observing that you're doing is what I've observed most people doing. You're the dog, okay? Teacher. Okay, I'm gonna imitate you. I wanna show you what's happening. This is important. Your body posture says more than anything, by the way. Right. Your words mean nothing. This body is everything. It's what our society has lost. The ability to read body language is too busy yakking. Mm -hmm. We're missing the signals of, you know, this is a little too close right now, lady. You wanna back off, right? So then, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that means back off, okay? Right. Yeah, I can see you're uncomfortable. That's what we're missing. Big with the dogs. So what you're doing is because, now you do what she was doing to you, with her eyes. And then what you're doing because she's down there is, you're trying to get her to look at you, but okay. you're going, you're starting to do this. What happens when I do this to you? Right, it doesn't. You're kind of getting happen. in her face because you're wanting to look at you. <laughs> right. So what I would ha coach you in doing is stand up and smile and let her look at you. Quit trying to give her the answers. Giving her the answers, what happens when we give the student the answer? They don't learn anything. That's why you're such a good student, because you're both answering, I'm asking a lot of questions, okay? Mm -hmm. So, when you're looking down on her like this, what do you think, why do you think she's not looking at you? What did you just do to me when I was doing that sample with you? You were right. like avoiding me. Right. So be aware of your body posture first and foremost. Okay. Stand up and smile, it's her job to find your eyes. It's not, your. <laughs> It's all, you're trying to help her. You're trying to help her. It's not helping yeah. her. It's actually causing her to yeah. avoid you. Does right. that make sense? It's mm -hmm. really amazing when I've seen this over the years. It's like everybody does it. It's very interesting. Yeah. It's just animal nature, human nature. So, smile and wait. Let her figure it out. She's not going anywhere else in this context. We don't have the floor court because she wants to come out. Right. So her options are minimized because her only other option is to go back in the house. That's fine. You don't get to come out. Mm -hmm. And there's no barking and we're all happy. But for <laughs> teaching sake, we've got to, she needs to want to go out the door. Mm -hmm. So smile and just wait. Shh. Shh. <laughs>
<laughs> that's what this little thing in her. So do you know that story about the angel who puts the souls in the womb and then she went, shh, that's why none of us can remember what the hell our purpose is. <laughs> All right, so smile and wait. As soon as she sits, sits down, I don't care. As soon as she looks at you, YES opens the door ajar. A little. You're telling her that's the right answer. Your reinforcement is going to be getting out, but I need you to stay right here. So if she looks at you and then she looks away, you can wait or you can shut the door. She looks at you again. Y-E-S, indicate, predict, wait for commitment. Commitment. Is this what you want, Mom? You want me to look at you? Y-E-S. Right. I didn't say her yet. She should stay put, standing or down. Yeah, yeah, even if you have to count three to five seconds in your head to get some duration between the last yes and the off switch. And free. Now you can get up and go and do whatever you want. Okay. So how long should she... And keep building from there. Okay. Duration, longer and longer. Mm -hmm. And then you can start proofing and adding high rear distractions. She's like, oh my god, oh my god, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh, I'm looking! <laughs> That's so fun to watch when dogs, you can see them in, controlling yeah. their own impulses. That's the magic of eye contact. Now, if you would like to go with this flow, we could then do an official introduction of how I teach eye contact, which yeah. is not putting the food right here. Right. Because what you're teaching That's the dog is... That, I know, I'm very did. familiar. Well, and then we did this. Yeah, we but, did all but you already taught the dog to stare at the food. I teach my dogs to look away from the food immediately. You get nothing when you look at the distraction. You don't get anything when you're looking at the food. That's where we start. Toys, if you're looking at the door, if you're looking at the anything. Yeah. The dog, the cat, right here. Yeah. Right here gets you everything. Right. This gets you what you want. This, right here. That's what Defer I want. Defer to me. Defer. Defer. <laughs> right here. Right here. Look at me. Look at me. Mm -hmm. Look at me. But I don't want to keep saying that because if she keeps saying it, she's going to avoid me because I'm nagging. Mm -hmm. So we become, if you require from here on out forward, everything that she wants, she must look at you first. I don't care what she does with her body. Most likely she'll sit, it's more comfortable, and she's done a lot of rehearsing sitting in front of you. Sitting is more comfortable, it looks like, for a dog to sit and look up at you than to stand and look up at you. Right, so especially her. So many of them sit, which is why I don't teach sit. I teach down. The sit is ridiculous, I'm sorry. I, I'll say it, no, I'm not sorry. I think teaching sit is stupid. Teaching sit is stupid. That's my new business name. <laughs> you know, there's all these businesses. Sit, stay, just sit. I'm just, teaching sit is stupid. <laughs> I like to unleash yourself. Yeah, that was a good name. <laughs> um, anyway, okay, so eye contact will get the sit mm -hmm. because they're going to sit down to look at you. But right. eye contact, really taught eye contact, they'll look at you no matter if they're up on one leg. Right. You know, doing agility or whatever. It's the eyes that, that are everything to, to defer to you for facilitation. So at night, she's been, she's been barking more at night. She'll oh. bark more at night in the evening when it's, I don't well, it's know It's later why. longer now. I mean, it's lighter and later. I guess that's why. Yeah. More and people there's out. more people out. She's yeah. more distracted, so it's, it's more irritating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I've been having her, like, come over and lay down next to us when we're watching TV or whatever, sitting at the couch. And I've been doing a lot of watch me with her. Uh -huh. And I do make her watch me for a while. Mm -hmm. and give her treat. I give her a treat because mm -hmm. that calms her down, mm -hmm. and then she'll just lay down and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Perfect. There's, what's wrong with that? Is it working? Um, I guess so. Yeah, but there's a lot of treats involved. Okay. That's what I mean. Okay. You feel like Talk you're bribing her. You feel like you're bribing her. I do. Okay. You feel like you gotta have food to get a behavior. She won't do it unless I have yeah. the food. Yeah. Yeah. She's on a fixed schedule. That's all. Yeah. She's stuck with, she's been bribed as a training, and you've been taught to lure yes, her. Yes. That's, this is just a result of that, of, of the way the food you So that's what I mean. Like, I know I'm not supposed to do that, but I keep doing it. I don't know if it's not, you're not supposed to do it, but I want to have a talk about this real quick before I go on, okay? Mm -hmm. Have you heard this term? What we resist persists. You ever heard that? Have you ever in your own life found that whatever you're resisting within yourself seems to get bigger and bigger? <laughs> it's not going oh, away. Oh, well, sure. Okay. What we resist persists. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that I'm about to tell you works if you do it. 
I decided with my puppy person who's panicking and freaking out over potty training and uh, crate training, and she did this all before with me 10 years ago, and it's like having another kid. I know the baby cries. I forgot the second one, and then he would be, shut up! <laughs> Irritate, right? Right. So let's use your children. You've had three children that you've given birth to. Yeah. And you two had part in that, Dad. <laughs> did you sleep very much after the newborn? Why do you have another one then? When you knew you weren't gonna sleep for another two years. I don't know. Okay, and then you got a third. <laughs> were you? Were you? Well, we had two at the same time. Oh, okay. Well, there <laughs> we you didn't go. Mean to we have just third. Said. Yeah, we didn't try to have three. That was not on purpose. So <laughs> you were thinking, oh, let's just go ahead. This is so much fun. We'll deal with the crying. We know it's gonna come. Do you want one? <laughs> you want to trade for mine? <laughs> um, so this is where I want to share with you with the barking. The barking is. The, one of the first reasons you called me, the, no, was the dog behavior? No, right, so you didn't initially talk to me about barking. Initially no, we were concerned about her behavior with dogs in the leash, yes. Yes, But the dogs very leash, quickly, yes. we moved from leash walking to barking. As a matter of yes. fact, we jumped into barking the first lesson and became oh, kind of focused on the barking. Then it all became about the barking and the collar and the thing and then barking and it was all barking, yes. barking. All of a sudden the leash walking was no longer a problem. We were all about the barking every lesson. How's our leash walking going? Great. She pulled me over today, uh -huh. but it was okay. <laughs> I tripped. She didn't pull me over. She wasn't reacting? She was reacting. Okay. It was, there was a woman who was jogging by us. But you know what? That woman ran by so quickly that she calmed down when I was on the ground and I was so grateful. Hmm. Yeah. You're okay. Yeah. This is the first episode that I've heard about since we started working yeah. together. And so how's the how's the leash walking going, except for today? Good. Great. What really have you good. not been thinking about? What have we not been thinking have about? Have you been thinking about the leash walking as much as the barking? Oh, no, we have not. So this is where I want to help you. I want you to play with this. I really want you to. I invite you to experiment with this. Your own behavior. Mm -hmm. Embrace the barking. Allow the barking. Accept it first. You haven't accepted it yet. Accept it. Accept the fact that Penelope is a barking dog. Oh, no, we know. We know. Accept it's different. I would like you to really accept it mm -hmm. and allow it and love it and embrace that this is what happens because it's an animal and dogs bark. Yeah. This particular dog might bark more than the neighbor dog, but there's just... <laughs> I would like you to experiment with your reaction to her barking inside yourself. Why you to, I'm telling you, our our attitude within ourselves affects everything. Yeah. See, even even like this this is the same thing Sorry. when I I know it's that same kind of uh, energy I got from you when I said uh, oh the toys when I said rotate them and you're on t camera and I watched it back and you're like. <laughs> Are you sure? Like you're like you're you you trust me and you want to believe me, but your body posture and your emotion was like <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You get me? So I invite you to get to a place in yourselves quickly and together or individually to first accept the sparking before we can help her. Okay. Learn how to calm down. Because there is a angst and a frustration and it's irritating and I know it. I am asking you, can you, do you think it's possible that you could revamp your attitude towards this barking and let's reframe this and let's talk about, isn't she have the most beautiful bark? I mean, this dog really, I mean, how can we take the barking and really, really, <laughs> because the other conversations are having. You're having the other conversations, you know, we don't need to repeat the words and what's happening when you two are in private. This barking is really a problem for you. It's pretty much consistently and then you forget for a second and then she reminds you that moment of repeat and relief and then it's not very often right so that's my first homework assignment with you okay as both of you is to find this is what I'm gonna suggest okay breathe when she barks just try this for a few times okay just just humor me breathe because that's really all you have to do and let it happen Mm -hmm. Just let it happen. Let it just try letting it happen a couple times without reacting to it. Let it happen. Just a couple times. I want you to let her bark. Mm -hmm. Let her bark. And just oh, let yeah. it happen. Let it happen. Okay, but yeah. I want a different. But yes. I want a different attitude. Breathing. We're gonna breathe because it's gonna keep happening. 
no matter how much money you spend, or no matter how many trainers you hire, or no matter how many quick fixes tools we buy, we need to let it happen. You're not letting it happen. This is why it's a problem. You're not allowing her to be who she is. She's a barking Great Pyrenees, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm not saying just for a reframing and approach to this, mm -hmm. just experiment with a couple times and in general, breathing and, and allowing it and let it, this let you get, listen, here's what I've experienced in my life. I ha we are conditioned to stop and fix everything and stuff it mm -hmm. and fix it and change it and we don't, we're not, don't, don't feel that, say a mantra, write a positive affirmation, mm -hmm. don't, don't know, you're not, ugh, you gotta, you gotta, okay? Just for fun, go against all of that conditioning and just, we're not letting things happen to us. We're not letting it happen, therefore we're never experiencing relief. And we're never going to experience relief until we let the thing happen that is trying to happen. It's like a train. You hear the trains over here? They yeah. keep coming. The trains never stop coming. We can choose to get on the train or we can choose not to get on the train. But guess what? That train's going to keep coming until you get on. Mm -hmm. Let it happen to where you're actually truly inside yourself letting it happen without anger, resentment, and frustration. I'm, I'm asking just a couple times. Yeah. Breathe. And let it happen and see what it feels like to actually let it happen versus constantly resisting and trying to stop it. Even if she gets like really crazy. You choose when you want to let it happen. Okay. That's what I'm going to let you choose because it's going to happen and all. I mean, it's already going to happen. Yeah. Find a time when you can experiment with letting it happen when you feel like you'll be more successful at letting it happen. That's your first homework assignment with this. Yeah, it, has, it doesn't involve a tool. It involves your core center of you, which is mm -hmm. where all your power is to solve this problem. So just in a woo-woo kind of, uh, this isn't really dog training, she's like coming here and like giving us some kind of self-help speech. Breathe, because that's really all you have to do. Because I don't know if you are breathing, so pay attention if you're even breathing when she starts barking. So she starts barking, I invite you just to breathe. And if the whole family needs to breathe together, everybody, let's just breathe. <laughs> Let's try something different. Mm -hmm. Let's try something totally different. And see what happens. And just feel what happens. Barking under a pillow. <laughs> is it usually louder than that, or is this it? This is her bark. Oh, it can. It, she, there's clearly not something nearby that she's barking at. She's hearing something. I don't smelling know why. something. We're smelling something. Yeah. If there was off. a dog like closer, it would be. It would be more growly. Yeah. She she moderates. She turns yeah. it down. Yeah. She knows we don't like. It. No, but she's not barking as loud as she she can. Too. That's all I'm saying. Oh. I think it's just because whatever it is is farther away. We have different opinions. Of course, we all do. We'd be yeah. boring if we were the same ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's open to being wrong. But he is right. I like to say, you know what, I'm wrong, but I'm open to being right. <laughs> Let's yeah. try that one. Part two, moving on. That was the barking segment of our program. Can you take, take that again? Take two. Take two. With that, then we're gonna move to how do I put this pivot to warn the dog that I'm getting ready to pivot you so mm -hmm. that she'll stop in the middle of the night when I'm watching TV without me having to feed her treats and watch it. As I say a word that predicts I'm gonna pivot you, she's figured it out and she just lays there because she doesn't want you to pivot her. Okay? It makes me actually wonder if she pretty much stops barking if we just go over her. And... I mean, the management tool works most of the time. Yeah, it really does. It's only when she's worked up a lot 
that I even have to move her. Mm -hmm. So I barely have to, I mean, I, I get her around her, even halfway around me, and she's already stopped barking. So do you want to put that on some kind of predictor cue so she knows you're getting ready to, so that eventually you can just say the word yeah. and not have to do it? So this is where I'm going to invite you, because this is also not a negative, and she's not reacting negatively to this, and no. she likes this trick turn. So we're finding out that, oh, this is a really physical dog. She likes movement. Yeah, she does. And movement is what seems to be combating this stress reliever of the barking. Yes. Or the habit at this point. It's probably not even doing anything, but it's just habit. It's just a habit. Yeah. It's probably as habitual as your reaction to it. Neither of you all are thinking about it when it happens. That's why I'm inviting you to get more present with mm -hmm. it. Let's let's reframe how we're approaching it, see if we can't shift um, our approach that way first. Because mm -hmm. I have pretty much tried every little trick to stop it. We're trying to force it to stop. It's not working. She's teaching us a really or reminding us of something we've forgotten, I think. That's what I believe animals are here to do, to remind us of something, not to teach us the but to rem I think we forget things. Mm -hmm. I think we've all forgotten a lot. Mm -hmm. So so first we're gonna breathe and let it happen. Is that the good? pivot? Let's think of a word, and the formula goes like this. Right now, what is, you are walking over, picking up the cord, and pivoting her, okay? If we want her to now predict that you're gonna pivot her, we have to let her know it's coming. So we're gonna introduce a new cue to that. And we're gonna follow it with the old cue, which is the pivot. So it's a word. If we want a word or a sound that mm -hmm. predicts I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm getting ready to pivot you, getting ready to see sick you, okay? Yeah. So we say word. New cue is the word followed by the old cue, which is the pivot. Now let's talk about a really working on eye contact being a really strong foundation behavior yes. for all of you. Yes. And Penelope. And uh, let's review spin. And then maybe the next lesson, because that's a couple more things we have to do. Um, if we have time, I really would like to work on down because what I would like to arm you with is you'll have move it to interrupt barking. Mm -hmm. You'll have spin to interrupt barking and give her something else to do. And then you can have down. Down can also be on your leash walks. When you get caught off guard like that, yeah. down, and she drops so that you can get, okay? Right. But an emergency down is very good. I need you to drop now, and that'll also help if you have to get another dog out of the way or whatever. Let's go ahead and get the floor cord and the food to review spin. Okay. Yes. Oh, 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 good, but why'd you indicate? You don't have anything to give her. I don't. Then I would just go, ready? Penelope. something to give them that's what the that's with the food the way the food is used in that indicator is it can be just right. diminished and ruin the power of it because it, I've never done it's a promise it. yes so yes. once it's easy like they was you could just say good dog because she did it because she must have been fun for her to do it she just <laughs> did it right so spin yes that's right I would like her to keep when I really know she's getting it she'll spin a second time on her own that's what I'm after Okay. Spin. Right now I'm focusing on, yes, the new signal and her continuing until I turn her off. Notice I'm changing my body posture because I see, yes, that she's getting ready to sit. So be aware of your body. Body says more than words. Stand up tall. I know. Free. You see, yeah. well, she might be getting confused. I want you to spin and you're sitting, and it's a similar word, too. Right. Change your body posture. What will happen is free, is when the dog's like, wait a minute, and you know that there's a huge breakthrough, they'll go, and you don't feed them on the first one, and they'll go, well, perhaps if I do that again. <laughs> <laughs> and the idea is that they keep, um, if you watch some of my videos, you'll see Marlo just spins like a <laughs> helicopter. Yes, that was three in a row with just my hand signal. Yeah. I want her to maintain it until I turn her off. Right. When I teach skills, I have clear on and off switches. That's what's different than the way you were taught. Mm -hmm. There's some similarities, but there's no clear on and off switch, and I think that really confuses the dog, and it um, causes the human to not understand the power of the food. Spin. 
Yes. You can almost, I swear it looks like they're thinking sometimes. Mm -hmm. Spin. <laughs> yes. So that's what you saw me doing with you thought I was doing something new. Free. I'm just minimizing the signal so that I'm not doing this. Yeah. I want to eventually just go. And you're, you're really deliberately standing to the side of her. Right, because I'm noticing when I'm working with her that she's yeah. confused about my body posture. Absolutely. Okay, now I'm on. This side. Yes. Being a dog whisperer again. Yes. see there you go she wants to keep playing when you walk away from your dog and they come back to you that means that they might still be interested in going again yes sorry free okay let me help you yeah before you start think about where you're at think about go away from her another thing about quit going to her i want you Everything. Mm, okay. Come to me. Your habit is going to hurt because of the floor cord, because of grabbing her out of the window. That's your habit. I'm asking you to do everything differently. This isn't hard at all, is it? Yeah. <laughs> right? You're both, all of you. I mean, this is like a, a restructuring. So get yourself in position. Come away from her again. Let her come to you. We, okay, no. Let her come stand next to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I keep trying to get to yeah. her side. Because you beat Penelope. Yeah, she's on your side. And then that way you can walk because you get yourself twisted yeah. because of where you're standing. Right. That's all. Just okay. get her next to you like you're actually going on a walk. Try that. Yep. Yes. Perfect. There you go. Do it again. There you got oh, it. Oh, I know. Am I, should I be saying the word? If you want to reinforce her, yeah. If you want to wait for a second spin, you can. Just make sure you say it when she commits to the turn. When she commits to the turn is when you when say she, it. Yep, when she turns. Instead of saying why yes. No. No. Just show me what you mean. Show, do it and then I'll answer you that way. Okay. Do what you're trying to explain to me with your indicator word. You mean with the yes? Uh-huh. Okay. No. Yes. Perfect. That's it. That was the answer. You just indicate when she commits to the turn. Right, but when do we say S-P-I-N? Oh, that, that's teaching her that, that that's introducing a new cue. Yeah. So you would say that first, first followed by before. the hand signal. Okay. Right now, though, what I would focus on is get your physical down. I don't think you're ready for verbal yet. All right. Yes. Perfect. You see how she responded? She, con she con continued. I'm, that's I'm finally figuring that yep. out. Yeah, good. That was perfect. So it took me a while to get what you meant. Yes. I did that for video effect. <laughs> You'll see it when we play it back. Oh, oh, oh. See, I would have waited for her. Be, oh. It's okay to wait and see if she goes, wait a minute, what if I keep going? Oh, okay. Think about letting her try to, think of, try to figure it out on her own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to help her really bad. That's your nature. That's your habit. That's fine. Yes. But I would like you to let her work a little harder. Very good. And she's distracted, so this is good too. She's a little distracted right now, but she's still she with you. She's yes. That was so good, the way you whispered like that. Yes. That was sarcasm, and she's trying to think. It's not working. I, I'm not working, not her. She's doing great. Yes. Right, right there. Yeah, perfect. 
Good. And again. Yes. Oh boy, that was a perfect vocal on that indicator. That was just beautiful. Good. <laughs> yes. So see how I'm kind of waiting for that? I'd like her to do it on her own without me having to signal her. That would be so awesome. Yes. She started going to SIT. Mm -hmm. That's why you need to watch because I want to get her before. She's confused because I'm waiting on maybe a little too long. Right. She may not quite be getting it yet as much as I would like her to be getting it. Yes. Free. And remember, I mean, because we're doing this one session, it's always best to stop while they're still motivated and keep it short rather than going too long where they're yeah. confused. Right. It's like with me and you. Like I could, I give you my time, but am I really giving you benefit if I stay too long? Are you guys burned out? You know. Mm -hmm. So that that's why we want to kind of like end on success. Yeah. So I think she has one more in her for you to rehearse. Maybe. Or do you think we should end on that? What's that? Either way. Make a decision for me. Let's just end. Okay. Make a decision. <laughs> I just want to show you, you're standing right in front of her. And this is, what, this is what's not being pointed out to students in classes. Right. Your body posture should be different for every signal you give the dog. Oh. And to proof the dog, like if it's sit, I, I, I practice my body in different positions signaling the sit, rather than always being standing in front of them. Right. So let's think about where you're standing. Penelope, let's just see if she really knows this, okay? okay. Down! Yeah, if you touch the floor, that's... Oh, God. Great. Let's just reteach this my way. <laughs> Would you love to do that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> opposite of what you're doing. Uh -huh. I teach down from a stand, not from a sit. You probably learned puppy push-ups. You sit yes. down. You see, I know this because I've gotten all of these dogs that have been trained that way yes. that are confused. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit she down. They never maintain either. Yeah, sit, stand, yeah. down. Uh, she knows, uh, what is it? <laughs> yeah, and all those orders. Right. So what I like to do is, what I did is I created an archway. So if you have wobbling knees and you're like, I don't want to get down on my knees, then I can just take a broomstick and put it on two. I can just create a... Yeah, okay. What we want her to do is to go under with her paws, which gives her in that um, like almost downward dog thing, and she's going down on her elbows versus from the sit. Mm -hmm. And so again, I can just go next to her, stick my leg out, yeah. create an archway. There it is. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm jackpotting her. Yes. I'm giving her a high rate of reinforcements because we're doing something new. Yes. 
I'm saying it before I give her a treat. I'm breaking them in my left hand as we go. Yes. So she's a downward facing dog. Free. <laughs> and where we go from here is up. So eventually I'm standing and I'm not bending over all the time. At this point, this far out, that you still have to bend over and touch the ground. Yeah. This tells me that you're stuck in that seat, in that uh, building chain. You're stuck. Mm -hmm. There's so much. There's so much more to go. So I can go down. I said it, right? If we yes. do like the puppy push-up first, she does sit down yeah. and up. Freak. Then she can do it. Right. But can we get away from that right now? Are you cool with doing a try yeah. something new? <laughs> Just because I think the puppy push-ups are confusing her, this will give her a whole new, because where we're going to go from here is right now. That's what we want. Right now, mm -hmm. your life depends on it. That's where right. I'm going to go with this, an emergency. Mm -hmm. So I want you to consider getting... We talked about a little bit of a raised bed for her. Now watch what she's doing right now. She wants this food, right? Look at her so focused on the food. Watch what I do. Yes. Move it away from your face. Yes. Away from her to look at you. See where my eyes are? Come over so you can see what I'm seeing. Use your floor port. I'm waiting for her to look at me. Mm -hmm. Food goes away. Stand on her cord so she can't go anywhere else. <laughs> yes? Yes. food on my face. The first thing I do is, I'm out here, I've got your floor cord, I have you tethered, what are you going to do? Right, right. What happens if I get up? What happens if I, what happens if I, what happens if I look at you? Yes. This is how I begin to teach my dogs, look away from the environment, focus on me. Look away from the dog and the cat and the squirrel and the leash dog and the everything else, back to me. It's so very powerful. It's the first thing I teach my puppies. This is the, like sometimes this is all I teach. If I can get eye contact from my dogs, right. okay, everything it's else. the way it's taught. Mm -hmm. Doing it just when you put it on your face, you're teaching the dog to, to uh, initially you're teaching the dog to focus on the food. With this approach, you're teaching the dog to focus on looking away from the food. Right. And then you're throwing in the distraction, but you've already taught the dog to focus on the food. This like and then what, what did she do? Then I, well, what if I move the food? What if I drop my hand? What if I put it on your nose? What if I put it right by your face? Mm -hmm. What? I have dogs, I can throw food all over them. I can throw food, I can put it on their paws, everything. They're like, mm-mm. <laughs> Until you Impulse say. control. Because once your dog is responding as if to say, I get this, I understand what's happening, and they're doing it on their own, once she spins on her own, then she's, it's become a habit. And she doesn't need to be reinforced for it, right? Because it's or it's like the barking. You don't need to but reinforce her barking. If you're the food around, mm -hmm. that's a mo that's not a reinforcement if they no, don't get to eat it. I'm using the food as a distraction. Yeah, okay, distraction and a reinforcement. Let me just give you a little dip. Okay, just for fun. Let's see what she can do. All righty. All righty. Now I usually like to tether the dogs when I do this because I want to make sure she doesn't get it. But I'm just gonna see what happens. Oh, good teamwork. <laughs> Go ahead and leave it exposed. Yes.
Now, what I would really like to reinforce is her laying down, but we started with the eyes, right? Mm -hmm. So now she's just, she's, where's she looking right now, mm -hmm. Colin? Where's her eyes? That tree right there. Yeah. She's not paying attention to me. So look what I'm going to do. Wait. Focus off that, she gets it. Yes, you're watching my body posture. You notice I'm not trying to get her to look at me, I'm just waiting. But guess what my magic is? What's the tool? The if I didn't have this tool, this would not work. Management tool must, yes, be in place at all times. Feel what's happening? Yes. You're scratching my boot. <laughs> I'm going to fix my phone, dry clean my shirt, and shine my boots. Yes. You know, why would you wear boots to train a dog that you don't want scratched? That's a good question. Yes. <laughs> That's why I don't care if she scratches them. Yes. 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 <laughs> Free. This my client just reminded me on the video the other day. She was doing your time and she wrote it. Is exquisite. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, it really is. Yeah. I need to be sharing this gift. It's true. When I've tried to do the. Yes, because uh, this is what I do. Didn't work this so is my well skill. This yeah. is my gift. <laughs> now, do I for have sure. the gift to teach you to give you this gift? If we practice. Yeah. Yeah. The more we practice, the more you understand and you start to get it. Mm -hmm. I can, right now, I'm kind of experimenting to see what she can handle because I know what to do. I've got a lot of backup plans. Right. Number one, I must be prepared management in, in place at all times. My foot over there, if I was the layman and these were important boots to me, I would have went, oh no, you didn't it. I would have totally lost it. The dog got the food. Right. That, what the heck is wrong with us? Like, what, if I would have gotten distracted by her scratching my boot, that would have just been absolute ignorance on my part right. to even show up to train a dog in the wrong attire. Mm -hmm. I.e., if she scratched your foot, right. well, maybe we shouldn't be wearing thongs to train the dog. I'm not saying don't wear thongs. Yeah, yeah, I no, used I to know. have a rule now. I don't care. Don't you want Because I used to be too intense. But so the idea is that I have heavy, thick boots on so that she doesn't hurt my foot. People pay a lot of money to get boots that are already worn. So she's helping me. Yeah. No, but I have boots on and I make sure that she can't get that food out from under my foot if I'm going to take the risk of putting my foot on there. Because I need to be calm and focused and relaxed so I can give her the right answer mm -hmm. and help her understand what I'm expecting. So yeah. that's why I tether the dogs when I do food on the floor. So if I throw it at, you know, I'm really watching, I'm taking a risk because I could mess up still. I'm good, but I'm still human, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like the Cirque du Soleil guys. I mean, they, the, the men and women, they practice forever, but that doesn't mean they're not gonna sometimes fall. Right. So yes, very good, great, but be prepared. That management tool already, you're seeing the success with, all I did was put that on and she stopped barking. Yes. That's just a tool. It's just a leash you know. being used differently, reframing the leash, like reframing your behavior around your 
frustration with the barking and letting it happen and breathing and experimenting with reframing how we're approaching it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's my little introduction of how I teach eye contact. And I want you to know that my dog lived to be 16 and I rarely ever spoke to her. I didn't need to. I had a very, if she came and stared at me, she would come and she would stare at me. <laughs> and I would go, you want to go hurry up? That was her potty cue because I didn't have a doggy door. She'd get up and go to the door. If she didn't have to pee, she would go, like, right. that's not it. Keep asking me. And then I'd go, you want your ball? You want to the park? Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. There was words that, she, that she wouldn't move until that word is what she wanted. And how did she? So cool. She looked at me. Yeah. I didn't nag and yell and scream and grab and I clapped. She had a very clear clap stop cue, which was really smart because as they get older, they start to lose their hearing first. Right, 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 sense right. of smell last. Mm -hmm. But she could hear that clap because it was loud enough. So. What kind of dog was she? She was a flat coat retriever mix, black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. And um, anyway, very. You'll even notice in my videos with the dog, you can hear the dogs playing. I have music on. You don't hear, you mm -hmm. don't hear a lot of yuck, 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 yuck. Oh my God, these dogs need a break mm -hmm. from all this. Con yeah, hammer, hammer. It's like the Charlie Brown. Wah, wah, that's what I think oh, they're hearing. Oh yeah, totally. All right, so that's just a little taste of the way that I teach eye contact. Okay. Penelope, let's go back to this down real quick. Yeah, way. yeah. Archway. Yeah. So I, I have the food in my hand. She wants it. I move the food under my leg. I remove the food when she goes down. Yes, bring it back. Mm -hmm. So I'm removing the food. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. Yes. Then I bring the food. Oh, she's starting to get up. So this is teaches her to stay down there. Yes. And where you feed her with the food, like if I hold it up here, she'll probably get up. Okay. Now later I'm going to use that as a distraction so she'll stay down and not get up because I hold the food up. So now I'm going to have her go back down. Yes. Notice I'm reinforcing after. I'm not luring her. That's the difference. Free. Yeah. Or just try that before we lose her. So, do I say down? No. Okay. Yes. Move your hand away from her mouth. Keep your hands on your other side of your leg. Move your hand away. And now indicate and bring it back and give her the food towards her chest so she doesn't get up to get it. Yes. Yes. Keep her under your leg. You're perfect. Yes. yes. Move your leg back. You just moved your leg. So aim yes. for her chest so she's not crawling. Okay. Yes. Good. Now, she's already yes. down. I just want to keep her there. Good. See that? Good dog. That means a <laughs> uh, no. I like this game. That's what you want. When you right, turn your dog right, right. off, you want your dog to go, I don't want to be done. Most of our dogs can't wait to be done under the arm of the person who's hovering over them. Right. She was just like, well, wait a minute. All I have to do is lay here. What if I say? <laughs> so what I would have done is I would have went back and reinforced her just because it's the beginning. Right. But I'm just letting you know in the yeah. beginning, I'll reinforce their choice to stay down and not turn off just in the beginning yes but that's just a way to get her to go down remove your old introduction to it we're teaching a new even though we're still doing down we're doing a new down this mm -hmm. is going to be an emergency down which is going to help you on your walks so that when she's getting all revved up and there's an emergency mm -hmm. situation yeah. I am going to startle her by down and we're going to practice saying it like that because in real life, whether you practice or not, that's how you're going to say it. Yeah. So I sure. tell people, listen, I'm not into barking and yelling and screaming, but when I am panicked, I'm no different than you. I'm going to scream. I'm going to yell. I'm going to be louder. So right. why not rehearse being loud when you give them the cue, but we're just not going to be loud all the time. But randomly, we're going to throw out a whoop, bam, mm -hmm. hot. And now this is like, I need you to like get into your body and get what down. she does it? Well, we're not going to ask her to do that until she's prepared. Yeah, okay. But we will prepare her by rehearsing that scenario like rehearsing for play. Does that yes. answer your question? Mm -hmm. The end result is, ow, bam. I mean, bam. They're not even going to think second. Boom. And they're going to want to do it. They're not doing it because they're afraid something bad's going to happen. Right. Oh, yeah, this is where I go down and mm -hmm. everything wonderful happens. It's a difference. Right. You're not going to yank her down. Exactly. <laughs> and that is, that is how it's taught. I, mean, I know. It's different ways. I know, I know. Or bribed. And then you, yeah. You know. So, imagine, visualize for a second. She's ha you're, you're on a walk. You've gotten spun out. 
like this gal with the Today. dog, and you just go down, and she just drops so that you can get your druthers. So you think she would do that even like in that reactive moment? It that is the goal of training a dog is to train them so that when they are aroused, that we can get them back in their body. That's the only reason why anybody trains. Yeah, right. But guess what? You've got to build to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're stuck in this kind of mid guard, mm -hmm. serpent swirling kind of. And we're right here. Mm -hmm. And boy, I hope we stay here because I don't know what we're going to do when we go here. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, we're here. <laughs> oh, we're here now. We didn't rehearse for here. Oh, there's right. a lot of people in the audience and imagine them naked. It's not working. So right. we have to build. Remember the scaffolding? Yes. Okay, that's what we do to get to the point. So what will help get there is getting her off the ground. Getting one of those. I'm only asking a foot off the ground. Just get her up on something that's just really effective. Okay. The mess. Yeah, it's full of white Move it. Bam. Opposition reflex kicking in, right? So when I get into that situation, I don't want to get into that battle. I want to move it. Yeah, I don't want to do that because that's totally natural. That's opposition reflex. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad to see it. Dude, that's a louder bark. Mm -hmm. position that that's yeah. opposition reflex I had to get myself in a different position fast because that that's how I teach stay by the way oh. I teach dogs stay by engaging the opposition reflex because mm -hmm. they naturally want to stay put they don't want to come with you mm -hmm. it's a physical response that's innate it's in them mm -hmm. think of how many times we're trying to pull a dog away from something we're actually working against their nature so I've got to get my body in a different position and change it mm -hmm. Would that help you seeing me do it? Yeah, it was great. I'm so glad we have that on video. I'm going to study that. Move it. <laughs> and there's how we're going to let her know it's coming. 